Hi there, and welcome to Thick Paint. I'm Brad Tier, and today we're going to be talking about applying thick applications of paint using a method known as loading the brush. Uh, I'd like to demonstrate what I mean by that by showing a few close-ups of my paintings. Now, as we get closer to this uh, patch of paint, you can see there's uh, there's a lot of color that's sort of intertwined together. And I accomplish that by putting different layers of color on my brush, usually using a palette knife. Here I have a 36 by 36 canvas, and it has been gessoed, and I've transferred my composition over to the canvas using a grid. And you can see the grid here. I've uh, just used some chalk lines to drop that in. <coughs> Um, now this is a little bit different than I normally use. I normally put down a red iron oxide um, gesso uh, or I stain the canvas with red iron oxide. This time around I wanted to try something different just as an experiment. I wanted to see how it uh, reacted with the greens that I'm going to put on onto the canvas. Normally I will put a, a red underneath a predominantly green painting so that little bits of red will kind of shimmer through and create a little bit of uh, vibration. I, um, I don't really like to rely on formulas, so I wanted to try something a little bit different here. Um, I don't think it will affect our sky too much, as, and that's what I'm going to be demonstrating tonight. So, <clears throat> um, I'm going to mix up some color here on the palette, and uh, we'll dive in. So this is my value scale, and it has values from 1 to 9 on here. And um, um, that's black, and that's white, and then there are these shades in between, seven values. And we'll make one of these later, so I'll teach you how to do that. Now this is my leftover paint from the last time I painted. And after I am done, I clean up my palette and put all the color up here. And I find it's a nice way to get some broken color, some random color into maybe kind of a boring mixture. So I'm going to get my palette laid out here. So uh, the value that we'll be using, a sky will be anywhere from a 9 down to a 7 in the darkest areas. I don't want to I don't want to over mix my colors. You can see there's a lot of color going through there. So now that's a 7. So if we mix a little bit of the indanthrone blue in there, that'll be now that's starting to go too low of a low of a value. So we got to really keep it. Well, let's check that. I think I think we're okay. That's a seven, so that's good. So what's that? That's eight. Okay. Now to some people it might seem like this is sort of a sloppy method to do it, but it is actually very controlled, and um, it, it you have to go to a lot of effort to get it to look as controlled as this. So now in my painting, uh, it starts, um, it's, it's warm on the left, the sun's coming from the left, and it gets cooler towards the right. So we'll start um, putting this white on the left. Now it's, it's getting pretty greenish, but the sky often is a lot more green than you'd ever think. Now, if you can see all the color that's in there, when I swipe this off, it's going to um, make a stroke that's quite interesting. If you can see all the color that's in there. And I've thickened it up a little bit with the um, lead white replacement. And so it should, it should go in quite interestingly. So I still have a ton of paint on there, so I'm just going to start swiping this off as, as uh, best I can. Now, the, the closer you hold your brush to the canvas like this, the more paint you'll get off. 
And here's the painting with the sky all painted in. I've mixed up some paint in order to paint the mountain range, and those are the pigments I'll be using. What I'd like to do now is paint in the mountain and um, using my smaller brush and uh, the three pigments that I've mixed up. So, <clears throat> I want to take a look at this stroke right here. I put that on the brush from used from my palette knife here. I'm just going to lay that right in there. Don't overwork it too much. I put a, <clears throat> a little bit of white paint on there, you can see. There's a bit of something on there. I'm picking up a little bit of lighter paint from, from the sky and I'm just going to put it in there just to give it a little bit of and that's basically it You'll notice a lot of a lot of texture there. I hope that was of some benefit. And if you have any ideas you'd like to add to this technique, I hope you'll um, write them down in the comments. I look forward to your ideas. Thank you.